Greetings, I, the War Al, greets you, and welcome to Strat Talk, the series where we talk about strategies and tactics for the game Counter Strike Global Offensive. Now, a lot can happen in a round, so we're going to be talking about every aspect of this particular round of professional Counter Strike between Virtus Pro and the Ninjas in Pajamas. This is the pistol round, very important round in this game to get that early economic lead. Get yourself ahead, get yourself the, the money advantage. Now, it looks like Ninjas in Pajamas is using a preset tactic. Just a bombsite take on A. And it goes a little bit awry, so we're going to be talking about both the danger of preset tactics, their strengths, as well as what happened in this particular case. So as we can see, and now all that craziness went on. It puts into a 1 versus 2 with Alu, and he is not able to win it. He gets taken down. So let's hop back and check that out step by step. And the first thing we have to look at here is what they have bought. And we can see it here on the T side. They have bought up a single smoke here on exist and then a bunch of armor, which tells me that they are going in hot. They don't have time to move around the map to try to play it standard and to try to play it dynamically. So there's kind of two basic ways to approach a round of Counter-Strike. One is to play a standard setup, a dynamic setup, where you're going to be watching all the angles. You'll have a player here at B, you'll have uh, a player at middle, maybe a player boosted up here, player playing A main, maybe another player who rotates in between. You could also sneak a player out here. Now the reason is that it gives you map control on the terrorist side, meaning it cuts the map in half. You have intel about what's going on, and if you get a pick, then you plan your attack. As the timer ticks down, you try to take more position, you try to figure out where the best place to, to peek through, to poke through the armor is. What Ninjas in Pajamas has decided to do is the second way, which is a predefined tactic. It's just like, this is what we're going to do on this pistol round, and they just go with it. It's, it's what we used to call a, a Blitzkrieg strategy, where they just push into a bomb site. Now, the standard way of playing, nades are going to benefits you much more. When you're just going to take a bomb site, you only need the nades that you need for that bomb site. And armor on the pistol round, very important. I know the pistols are going to be a one-hit headshot, but having that armor gets rid of the aim punch. And getting aim punched, I mean, you get hit once, you are dead. Now let's check out as the round commences here. We already know what the ninjas in pajamas is going to do with their setup. Let's put it in slow motion here. They are going to set up one player, get right, playing the lurk in this position. They're going to push through here, a main, two players, and two players here. Then they're going to smoke this position right here, and then just push into A from all of these positions at once. Normally you're going to have a player push out here, then you're going to have players push into the site, one player will check quad, and they'll plant the bomb usually right around here. That's like the, It's a very basic strategy. Now, why this doesn't work, or one reason why, and why doing a standard setup uh, may have benefited them on this round in particular, is what we see Neo doing right here. Over on B site, we see two CTs, Neo and Snacked, actually pushed out. So Virtus Pro has set themselves up. They're not even watching middle at this point. They've thrown a single smoke down here. They believe that's going to be enough to dissuade the T's from pushing out. And by pushing forward at B, they have the intel of, oh, there's no terrorists here. We think they're probably going to take A. And they've already moved back and set up a really strong hold off here for bomb site A. If we move forward a little bit in time. We can see Biali is going to be playing over there by quad. We have a player up on top. We have a player at the forklift. This is a really difficult position to move in. And then you also have the two players at B who are probably going to start rotating. They haven't even heard anything yet. And we already see a player on the minimap, Snacks, rotating back over to A. No sound happened just yet. So there's the smoke, a very important smoke. And actually, we're going to take the time as this smoke comes out here to talk about it. Because if there is one smoke that you should learn, for A site cache, this is that smoke. So I'm gonna hop in game and show it to you. I've shown it before. So this is the way that exists through the smoke. He stood against this wall, walked forward until this line lined up with the end of the crate. Then he aimed sort of up here and did a walking throw forward at the top of it. And as you can see, that bounces directly into the site, blocks off this position so you can't see. This is actually really important because it blocks off players coming from the connector there. You can't see the players coming out of the door who are at highway. And uh, you also can't see them from truck. It really allows you access to the bomb site and allows you to focus on if there's a player hiding around this corner here or inside of the site, for example. Very important smoke. Again, if you learn one smoke for taking A on cash, that should be it. Notice, though, that Virtus Pro's positioning was not affected at all by that smoke. That smoke was down right here, and they were positioned there, there, and uh, I believe over here. 
Look at that. That smoke doesn't affect them at all. And that just tells me that Virtus Pro knew what was happening and positioned themselves around that smoke so that it wouldn't affect them. And it was actually really neat. Instead of having a player standing at highway who could rotate back to mid quickly. Virtus Pro, if we can look at their buying, they bought up, there were actually three smokes here. We saw one was thrown here at middle and then two more. Uh, one on each side of the, the uh, map. Here is Snacks with one of the smokes over here at B. And then we have a player here over at A with the smoke. And it's really important, those smokes are strong. Because what they're going to do is they're going to block off one avenue of attack for the ninjas in pajamas as they push in. And we can think about nades as a way of delaying the terrorists from pushing as well as splitting them up. So when, what really what it's about is baiting out the other team's nades. So they have a single smoke over here on Ninjas in Pajamas. If Virtus Pro can delay them with a the smoke and sort of nullify this smoke, then Ninjas in Pajamas has nothing. So really, what Ninjas in Pajamas is doing here is saying, no matter what happens on this round, we don't have any flashes, we have a single smoke, we're going to throw that smoke. Once that smoke goes down, we are pushing into the site. So I want you to see what happens here with the defensive smoke. I believe it is thrown by Bialy. So let's watch that. As soon as they get intel, there's a smoke coming out. So he saw it. They should call the rotate right now. CTs jump into action and start moving over at this point after Bialy saw that single smoke. Watch this smoke. Immediately throws it down at the doorway. Now, that's really smart. I love that smoke because it blocks off this position. These players have to push through a smoke. You know you're at a huge disadvantage when you push through a smoke. Then they just can focus on A main. So now they have three players watching A main. With two players here, they've sort of divided the forces. These terrorists are going to still push out that smoke, but you can see how it puts them at a disadvantage as they're jumping out there. All right, then the gunfight happens. That just comes down to who is Shooty McShooty. However, there's one thing that we didn't notice, and that was the lurk. So let's hop back and check out that lurk. Get right is such a good lurk that we don't even notice him lurking when we're watching the demo. He's crept down here at middle. He sees there's no intel. He's checking all the positions. And as soon as you heard the smoke go down, if you're listening, he's going to run highway. He's going to check Z, make sure nobody's pushing in. And right now, T's, even though they've already gotten mowed down, they have three points of entry into the site, which is really great. One of these kind of got shut out and made real difficult. But the lurk makes all the difference here. Now, normally you're going to put your lurk in a position to kill the rotators. Um, get Right's pushing in to help with the bombsite take because things are going terribly, terribly wrong. And he gets behind them. And watch what he's able to do just by this positioning. Just because Virtus Pro did not watch middle. Just easily walk in, kill two players. They didn't even see him. Like, does Get Right even have to practice aiming? Because every time he kills a player, they don't know where he's coming from. And then comes the part where that is just, that's just bad. Maybe he should have practiced with the aim a little more. And he's dead. Puts Alu into a 1 versus 2, and at this point, it's kind of tough. Now, this is actually something else happening here, which is pretty cool. We have Pasha. He is down low. He's at 6 health right now. Instead of engaging here and engaging 2 on 1 against this player, look at this. Pasha falls back. Now we have Alu at 6 health. He's worried about Pasha behind him. He has the call from Get Right that says, shoot this player. He's looking for Pasha right now, and because he's looking for Pasha, he's not focusing on Neo who's able to get that final kill. So it's interesting that Pasha fell back. And let's actually look where he went. Oh, he was trying to flank him and move in from behind. That was actually really interesting. Now, I don't know, I don't know why he did that in particular. It's an interesting decision. Because if Alu was able to get out of the site, he could have rotated all the way over here to B and planted that bomb. So I guess the idea is Pasha was, in case he was running away, was going to go and sort of meet up with him here at B and try to intercept him before he could get that bomb planted just in case. So they divided their forces. Now, Sun Tzu said that if you outnumber your foe two to one, divide your forces. And that's exactly what Virtus Pro did here. All right, thank you folks very much for watching. I am the War Owl, and I still have no closer. I just want to take this time to say thank you to all of you guys who have supported me in this YouTube endeavor. It wouldn't have been possible without you. You've truly changed my life and enabled the creation of this content.